Today is Veterans Day in the United States. For more on this, we turn to Roy Wood Jr. and another episode of CP Time. <laughs> Ah, welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. In honor of this week's Veterans Day, tonight we discuss the contributions of the black soldier, the only armed black people that everybody's comfortable with. Since America's birth, African Americans have proudly served this country, even in bondage. George Washington's personal servant during the war was a slave named William Lee. The two spent so much time together, William was even able to photobomb a painting of Washington. <laughs> Lee and Washington's bond inspired many of the interracial action films we see today, such as 48 Hours, Men in Black, and Knight Rider. You know that car was black. It had a spoiler. Many black Americans have made the ultimate sacrifice, even if by accident, as when the first shots in the Revolutionary War killed Crispus Attucks. Though not a member of any militia, Crispus is my favorite character to play in reenactment, mostly because his part is so short and I get to go home early. <laughs> Crispus, look out, huh? Oh! Lord, I done died for these white people. <clears throat> Those were his actual last words. In the Civil War, black soldiers fought for the Union in regiments like the famous 54th Massachusetts Infantry. And even the Confederacy, upon realizing they were gonna lose the war, started drafting black soldiers. The South learned the same lesson the NBA did in the 50s. If you don't have any black people, you ain't even in the game. <laughs> Moving on. In World War I, the 369th Infantry Regiment fought so fiercely that the Germans called them the Harlem Hellfighters. And when a German says you know how to whoop ass, that means something. <laughs> the Great War also provided many black fighters with their first chance to travel abroad. And once in France, our brothers in arms found something they had never seen before, respectful white people. It was so enjoyable in Europe that a lot of black soldiers didn't come back, which I understand. I went to Belgium for two days, ended up staying the whole summer with Helga. Oh, she knew how to iron that Belgian waffle. Oh, my waffles. I was there for three months. And then my wife found out. I'm sorry, baby. Please, please let me come home. Please. World War II would be a similar undertaking for black soldiers, as the only N-word they heard overseas was Nazi. This war also introduced us to the Tuskegee Airmen, the first African-American military aviators. While history may tell you that there were 932 pilots, it should have been 933. My Uncle Bebo was supposed to be a Tuskegee Airman, but they ran out of planes, which is a shame, because he would have put a hurting on them Nazis, but all they gave him was a bicycle. Couldn't even ride over there, because of the ocean. And in the modern era, no discussion of black veterans is complete without Colin Powell the first African-American general to become the Joint Chiefs Chairman and the first black Secretary of State. He helped lead America into the Iraq War, proving that a black man can ruin the Middle East just as much as a white man. <laughs> now, that's what I call true equality. <laughs> that's all the time I have for today. This has been CP Time, and I'm Roy Wood Jr. And remember, before the culture, Helga, if you're watching this program, please email me. I would like to meet our child. It's been 10 years. Roy Wood Jr., everybody. <laughs>